There is something that makes me come into your presence.
I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be. I will never be. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be. I will never be. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. King of glory, the ancient of this, we bless and we worship you. We magnify your name. We thank you for today. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because we are alive and we are well. Thank you for today. Thank you for another time of Bible study. Thank you because the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Daddy, as we go into your word this evening, I ask that you speak to us. Speak to us expressly. Speak to us clearly. Speak and reveal your mind to us. Help us to adjust. Transform us. Transform our lives. Let doors be opened unto us. And let your name alone be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everyone to another time of Bible study. My prayer today is that what God has in store for us, we'll receive them in Jesus' name. I also want to trust God that all is well with us, despite all the happenings in the land. I want to thank God on your behalf that you are listening to me, you're watching me right now. No matter what you have lost, I want to say that all is not lost because there is still God on the throne and he can restore all in Jesus' name. And that same God that is on the throne will open doors for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. By the grace of God, this evening we'll be talking about the topic, open doors. Open doors. And our text will be taken from the book of Revelation 3, 7 to 8. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. And I'll read. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things. See it, he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened it. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and thou hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. May God bless the reading of his word. What are doors? What is a door? A door can be defined as a usually swinging or sliding barrier by which an entry is opened or closed. For example, you want to enter into a house, there is always a barrier that is, on, that is hinged. That it is when it is opened, you can walk into the house. If it's closed, if it's never opened, you can't get into the house. How many people live in houses without doors? Houses open. Praise the Lord. Doors can represent physical blockade. In which case, before you can pass through, it must be opened. Doors can also represent spiritual blockade, an embargo, in which case unforeseen, unseen forces are limiting a man. Doors can represent day-to-day -day challenges. Doors can refer to an opportunity presented for something big, in which case you could land that thing big. Is like a door being opened to you. Doors can usher us into blessings. In which case, a door can be opened to a man such that everything they touch begin to prosper. So when we talk about open doors, we are referring to those doors that ushers a man into his blessings, into opportunities, into progress, into promotion away from stagnation. We're talking about doors that brings one out of bondage into freedom. And I dare say, before I go on, that open doors is for every child of God that is obedient, 
and honors God. And I decree and I pray this evening that open doors will be your portion in Jesus' name. All you need to do is just obey and honor God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So are you there today? It looks like the world has shut down on you. It looks like everything is caving in on you. It looks like everything you touch, you lose. It looks like when you try to start something, you go down. I know some businesses start to start begin this period and there is problem everywhere. After going through the COVID lockdown, coming up again, we had the protests. A lot of people will feel, ah, it looks like something is working against me. Something is bringing me down. It looks like the door of progress has been shut against me. I come to announce to you today, my brother, my sister, every door of progress that has been shut against you, that has shut you out, they will begin to open today in the name of Jesus. Because open doors is for you as a child of God. Praise the Lord. And because open doors is for every child of God, we need to understand how to approach, how to handle open doors. How do we get doors opened? Should I be doing it on my strength? How do I get things open unto me? How do I come out of this bondage? How do I progress in life? How do I progress in business? How do I progress in ministry? How do I progress in career? I've been laboring for so many years. I am not making any breakthrough. How do we handle open doors? How do we approach it? Number one, we can get open doors through prayers. We can ask for open doors in prayers. Colossians 4, 2-3. Colossians 4, 2 to 3 say, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Here was Apostle Paul in bonds. He was still saying, please continue in prayer. Pray for us. Help us so that God will open the door of ministry. In these places that I am. Praise the Lord. Are you shutting in any prison today? Are you pressed down and oppressed today? Like Apostle Paul, that he was confined, talking to the Christians in Colossae. You can pray to God. And doors will be open unto you. And those doors shall be open in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want us to ask God for open doors of opportunities today. In the place of prayer. Because there is nothing prayer cannot do. When you cry to God with prayer, with praise, with thanksgiving, you make your supplication known to him. He will open doors for you. Are you sick today? Cry to him for the door of healing to be opened. Do you need baby today? Ask God to open your womb. Let him open the door of babies so that barrenness is taken away. Are you in bondage? Ask God to open the door of deliverance unto you. Because the Bible says he will set the lawful captives free. Praise the Lord. Number two, how do we get open doors? Two, pursue or seek after open doors. Pursue it. Seek after it. What do I mean? You know, in those days, in the book of Nehemiah, when he was leading the people back to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, what happened? He prayed, he fasted, he went to the king. The king said, you know what? You can go back and rebuild. And they went back. But what happened? In Nehemiah chapter 4, we saw Sambalat and Tobiah starting to torment them. In fact, before chapter 4, we saw Sambalat and Tobiah rise up, torment, mock, 
plan evil. This war you want to build, it will not happen. What did Nehemiah and the people do? They did not just pray. They set out to walk. They set out to build the wall. They set out to God. They set out to, they pray to God, please defend us. Please help us. But they held God and they continued to build. How do I know? In Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 9, the Bible says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So they prayed and they set a watch and they continued building. Verse 13 says, Therefore set I in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spear, and their bows. Meaning I share the families. I share the people according to the dimensions of the walls. Verse 16 and 17 of that same Nehemiah chapter 4, it says, And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the walk, and the other half of them held both the spears and the sheets and the bows and the habigons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. Verse 17, They which builded on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that loaded, every one with one of his hands wrought in the walk, and with the other hand held a weapon. Have you seen that before? They had prayed to the Almighty God. They had fasted. They had prayed. They've asked God, defend us, protect us. But what did they do? The work did not stop. With one hand, they were doing the work. With another hand, they carried a weak pawn so that they can defend themselves. Are you praying for open doors? Don't just stop at praying. Set out. Prayer plus effort is a great approach. It's a great tactics. Don't just pray and do nothing. Praise the Lord. Number three. How do we approach open doors? Actually, number three says, take advantage of the doors that are opened unto you. Praise the Lord. You know, human beings, we are funny. We could be asking God for things. We could be praying for things. We could be waiting, waiting. And then the opportunity comes. We look at it and we say, oh, oh, this cannot be God. The man I'm looking for cannot be this poor. Or the job I've been praying to God for cannot pay this low salary. Or he must pay this X salary. When open doors are presented to us, by all means, we should take advantage of them and take them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number four. How do we approach open doors? Evaluate it and see that it is actually from God. Without sounding contradictory to number three, there are times we have to evaluate open doors and determine that it is from God. And I'll have more of that in the second section of this sermon. Because there are times we might have to say no. Or we might have to delay certain decisions before going through open doors. How do I mean? You know, in 2 Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13, 2 Corinthians 2, 12 to 13, Paul had an open door in Troas. But he said, I was worried, I was looking for Titus, the guy that has been working with me, because we have some other ministry to do. But because of that, he left the opportunity in Troas, and he went to Macedonia. Paul had an open door in trust, but he was greatly concerned because he could not find Titus. He let, he let that opportunity pass and move on to Macedonia where he had other work to do in the ministry. There are times we delay the decisions to take some doors because of some other decisions that will enhance the work of the ministry. So you need to evaluate open doors. You just don't rush into every door. Like I said, more to come in the second session. And finally, 
how do we call open doors? Thank God for open doors. Everything we have received, everything we have, we have always received. There is nothing we have in this life that we have not received. And everything we have received is maintained by prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. We need to show gratitude to God for what he has done in the past, for what he is doing now, and for what he will do. When we live a life of conscious gratitude unto God, we guarantee that he will always open doors for us. You want to open doors for your life. Live a life of gratitude unto God. Be grateful for everything he has done for you. Be grateful for your little beginnings. Be grateful for the high things you have achieved. Don't move about with a haughty face. Don't move about with a chip upon your shoulders. The strength of my power has done this. Because the Bible warns us that we should not think that way because it is the Lord who has given us power to get wealth. You want to assure, you want to be assured of open doors, live a life of gratitude and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Quickly, how do I know that this open door before me is opened by God? Because in the number four of opening doors, I said you should evaluate every open door. How do I know? How do I know this is not a boogie door? How do I know this door is not leading to an alley, to a trap? How do I know if I walk through this door, it will lead to my demise? How do I know it is the Almighty Himself that is beckoning on me and say, go, go? Praise the Lord. Amongst other things, number one, how do you know a, God, a door is opened by God? Number one, doors opened by God will not contradict the word of God. God will not lead you towards an opportunity that contradicts what he clearly says in his word. God will not give you a job that will take your heart and your time away from him. God will not provide a spouse for you that will cause you to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever if you are believing God for his spouse. God will not open a door that will require personal compromise or disobedience for you to enter. In essence, every opportunity coming and saying you must compromise before you can take it, move away. Anything that contradicts the word of God is temptation and not an open door. And you know, God says he does not tempt us. He says we are tempted by the desires of our hearts. So, how do I know an open door is by God? The open door must not contradict the word of God. Praise the Lord. Number two, how do I know this open door is from God? The door that God opens will be accompanied by confirmation. God does not open the door and say, hey, 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 quickly, quickly, if you don't enter now, I've closed it. He doesn't do that. God will always put somebody or a word or a leader, a mentor, a father, his Holy Spirit to confirm his word, to confirm his doors that he has opened for you. There is always a confirmation. Through prayer and discernment and seeking godly counsel, we should be able to walk through doors opened by God. The question is, do you have a mentor? Have you subjected yourself to an authority? Do you live your life like you own it? Can anybody talk to you? Do you obey authority? Because those are the things that come to play when God is opening door for you and you need confirmation. Praise the Lord. 
Number three, how do I evaluate that this open door is from God? Usually, when God opens doors for you, it always requires that you depend on God to see you through, not in your strength. Praise the Lord. You know, God will not give us something that will make us believe we are all by ourselves. We can do everything. We don't need him anymore. He's a God of relationship that always wants to have relationship with us. Hmm? That's why he said, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. When you seek the kingdom of God, he suggests that you are having a relationship with God. You want to know God more. You go deeper with him. The more you know him, the more you depend on him. As you know him, have a relationship with him and depend on him. He says, all these other things shall be added unto you. Promotion, increase, finance, blessings, breakthrough. Tell me, if you seek him, he blesses you, wouldn't it be foolish to go away from him? So usually, by the time you see the things you are doing, you see the mighty things you are doing, and people are all, oh, they are surprised. You say you are doing wonderful things, and you say, ah, in my strength, I can't do this thing, no. It is the work of grace. And you just give the glory to him and you rely on him to continue to help you. Praise the Lord. Number four. How do I evaluate that this open door is from God? And I wrote down here. Does it come with peace? When God opens a door, it should bring peace. And not confusion. You have a decision to take. It looks like there is an opportunity before you. You should have peace. Inner peace. That's not to say that open doors may not be scary at times. But you can be rest assured because the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Peace, like we know, is not the absence of trouble. It's just the assurance and the calmness of God that God will see you through in the midst of those troubles. So, open door does not mean you may not have contentions. It doesn't mean you won't have people contend. It doesn't mean you may not face troubles walking through it. But what God guarantees you is that as you walk through it, I will be with you. I will help you to walk through that door. And because you know God is with you, you will go with it calmly. You will not go troubled. You will have peace. That's why the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. It says, for a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many adversaries. A great opportunity is open unto me, but there are many people opposing. Apostle Paul could say that because he knew God was with him. He knew God was the one opening the door. So he knew he can walk through those doors irrespective of the adversaries surrounding him. Has God given you that opportunity? Irrespective of the opposition, check yourself. You must have that inner peace that assures you that you're on the right path. You know, today we have looked at open doors and we said open doors refer to those doors that ushers a man into blessings, opportunity, progress, promotion, etc., etc. You know, open doors is for every child of God. And we said, how should we go about open doors? Well, we should pray. We should walk towards it, walk for it. When the doors are presented, we should seize the opportunity. 
We should evaluate every open door to be assured that it's from God. And we should thank God continually. Live a life that is full of thanksgiving. Again, we say, how do we know that this open door is from God? Number one, we said, it must not contradict the word of God. In essence, when God asks you to go, that go, you must not find in the Bible where it says, don't go. It must not. Every open door must not contradict the word of God. How do you evaluate? We said the door that God opens will be accompanied by confirmation. And we ask, do you subject yourself to a mentor? Do you subject yourself to a leader? Are you the Lord of yourself? How will confirmations come? It can come through a leader. It can come through the word of God. It can come through mentors that have gone before you. It can come through godly men speaking directly into your life. If you are so full of yourself, you don't obey anyone. You don't defy to anyone. How will confirmations come? How can you say you love God whom you do not see when the man that you see, you do not love them? If you cannot be subject to your leader, you can't be subject to your pastor, you can't be subject to your parents, how will you be subject to the Holy Spirit? And how will you be able to confirm that this open door is actually from God? Praise the Lord. Also, we said that open doors will require you to depend on God because he's the one that has opened the door. He's the one asking you to walk through. And he's the one that will see you through walking there. You will depend on him all through. No longer your strengths. And finally, we said, when doors are opened, you must have inner peace. You must have inner peace. You must not lose your peace. My prayer for us today is that God will open doors for us in Jesus' name. In every area of our life we have been looking up to him for, he will open those doors in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will walk through those doors in Jesus' name. I know most of the time we want God to open doors for us. We want God to do something. We want breakthroughs. We want miracles. We want deliverance. We want healing. But do you know that God himself wants us to open doors to him. God wants you to open doors for him too. In Revelation 3.20, Revelation 3.20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. God is knocking. He's waiting for us to open the door of our hearts to him. Are you letting God in? You've been asking, open door, open door, open door, open doors for me. But God is telling you, my son, my daughter, open the door of your heart to me. Let me come in with you to sup with you and you with me. Are you peeping through the door hole? Are you opening a bit with a latch or are you even not listening at all? Have you opened your heart to Jesus? Because open doors, I said this for the children of God, is actually for those who have opened their hearts to God. Open doors is actually for those who have opened the doors of their heart to God. You want God to open, you want God to open doors for you today. You need to open the door of your heart to Jesus. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 9, John 10 9, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall find pasture. 
He is calling you today. He is knocking the door of your heart. He is saying, actually, co, 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 I am here the door. Open the door of your heart to me. If you open the door of your heart to me, then I will open the door to you because I am the door. You will come into me. You will be saved and you will go in and out. You will go about your businesses. You will go about your lives and you will find pasture. Pasture for the sheep represents life. Represent food, represent everything fulfilling, satisfying. Jesus is saying, if you open your heart to me, if you come through me the door, you will go in and out. You will go safely. Nothing will disturb you. You will find fulfillment. You will find prosperity. You will find food. You will find wealth. You will find healing. You will find pasture. You want God to open your life today, open the doors to you today, then give your life to Jesus, the door, so that you can find pasture for your soul. You want to give your life to Jesus today and turn it around? Let us pray. Please just say these prayers after me. And as you do, God will open doors for you and you will find pastures in the name of Jesus. Let's say, Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. Thank you because you are the door. The door that is open for me to have pasture. I come to you today because you've been knocking on my heart. I come to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me all my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus and make me whole. From today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I promise to follow you. Thank you for saving me. For in Jesus' name I pray. My brother and sister, I want to congratulate you if you have said those prayers. You are now a changed man. If you've said those prayers, you have just opened the door of your heart to God and he's already coming in to sup with you. And since you have opened the door of your heart to him, his words in John, 9, John 10, 9, which says, I am the door by me if any man enter in. He shall be saved. Right now you are saved. And you will go in and out. And you will find pasture from now on in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to encourage you. Wait with us till the end of this broadcast. Numbers will be displayed on the screen. We would like you to reach out to us. Contact us so that we can share more of the love of God with you and encourage you. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. For those of us that are born again, it's time to pray. Let us pray. I just want to say, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. Open doors. You are the door. You are the door. By you, if any man come in, they will be saved. They will go in and out and they will find pasture. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for that word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's say, Father, I thank you because you are the God of open doors. You are the God that open doors. You are the God that heals. You are the God that delivers. You are the God that prospers. You are the God that saves. I thank you. I thank you. You are not the God that shuts the door of good things to his children. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's say, Father, just like you delivered Paul and Silas, shatter and open every door shut against me in Jesus' name. Just like you delivered Paul and Silas, every door that have shut me down, shatter them, O oh Lord. Open them in the name of Jesus. Every seat of bondage I am sitting in, just like you delivered Paul and Silas when they prayed, when they sang unto you and the people heard them. Father, just like you delivered them, O oh Lord, you scattered the door open. Every door that has shut me down, Father, scatter them in the name of Jesus. Since I've opened my heart to you, since I've opened the door of my heart to you, every door that is holding me down, Shatter them, O oh Lord. Scatter them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's say, Father, please open doors unto me. Please open doors. Open doors. Open doors unto me. Doors of increase. Doors of anointing. Doors of promotion. Doors of wealth. Doors of prosperity. Doors of the ministry. Open doors unto me. Father, O oh Lord, everyone that is barren, open the door of 
fruitfulness unto them in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is sick, Father, open the doors of healing. Heal them completely. Everyone that is discouraged, encourage them, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is bowed down, lift up their heads again in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's say, Father, as I enter into those open doors, let me experience your peace. Let me experience your peace. As I enter into the realm of open doors, as I walk through the doors, Father, let me experience your peace. Your peace that surpasses all understanding. Let it be my portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Precious Redeemer, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for opening all the doors. We bless your holy name. The doors of goodness, the God doors of mercy, the doors of promotion, doors of anointing, doors of increase, doors of wealth, doors of health. Lord, we bless you. Doors of fruitfulness, we bless your holy name. Every bad door that has held us down, thank you for shattering them. Thank you for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time to give our offering unto the Lord. And I want us to appreciate God for opening doors to us. Let's give a worthy offering. Follow the instructions on the screen for the different kind of giving you are about to do. Whether it's tithe, whether it's offering, whether it's first fruit. Use the right account numbers with the right narrations. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. As your children give their offering today, I ask that you bless it mightily. By this offering, open more doors unto them. And let it be well with them, O Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It's time to take our announcements. Good evening. Thank you for joining us online. God bless you and reward your labor of love. We urge you to keep praying for our country, Nigeria, that according to Proverbs 14.34, righteousness will exalt Nigeria and sin will no longer be a reproach to her. Amen. We have some announcements which we will want you to listen to carefully. Next Sunday, Sunday 8th November 2020, first service, 8 to 9 a.m. Sunday school, 9.30 to 9.55 a.m. Second service, 9.55 to 11 a.m. Please take note of the times and plan to come early to attend any one of these services as there is still a restriction on the number of worshippers that can be allowed into the auditorium for each service. Our services will continue in church on Sundays only with the number restrictions and online via Facebook and YouTube. Our midweek services will be online and not in the church premises. Please connect with us on YouTube via the Healing Balm, and Facebook via RCCG Balm in Gilead between 5 to 6 p.m. on Tuesday for Digging Deep and on Thursday for Faith Clinic. You can also join the midweek services of our national headquarters on DSTV Channel 349 and Go TV Channel 83 between 6 to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays for Digging Deep and Faith Clinic respectively. Sunday, the 29th of November 2020, we will be having two services, which will be a special interactive session with Pastor Katie Oluwashe Gunjo. You will have an opportunity to ask any question that has been bothering you, and you will get answers as guided by the Holy Spirit. The theme is experiencing God's love in the good, the bad, and the ugly. Topic, straight talk. First service, 8 to 9 a.m. Second service, 9.55 to 11 a.m. We encourage you to use the online platforms to give your offering and tithe. You can also give your offerings online via GT Bank, 000-8141940. Tithes, GT Bank, 0148-571858. First Fruit, GT Bank, 060-170-7587. If you are giving any special offering, please transfer to the offering account. But state in your narration exactly what the offering is meant for. God bless you as you do so. If you have a testimony of what God has done for you that you would like to share, please send an email to you shall testify.bamingilead at gmail.com. You can also send a short video of two minutes by WhatsApp to 0703-085-5649. Note, if the video is more than two minutes, it will be edited to fit the two minutes. 
We want to use this opportunity to thank everybody who has been giving generously and supporting the church in this season of lockdown. The almighty God who sees in secret will reward you openly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Registration is ongoing for the Redeemed Christian Bible College, RCBC, 2020-2021 online theology program. Available courses are postgraduate diploma in theology for BSc, Masters, and H. Handy holders, diploma in theology for OND and NC holders, and certificate in theology for SSC holders. Registration fee is 6,000 Naira. Interviews are still going on, while lectures start in November on the 14th. Please call these numbers for more details, 0703-085-5649 or 0708-2242-480. We would like to encourage you to join the Balm and Gilead Community Chat Group as we pass a lot of information relating to church activities on that platform, especially since the time that we can stay in church is limited and there is also a limit to the face-to-face -face interaction that we can have. If you have any issues, please send a message directly to 0908-320-4019, chats only. Send your messages there and we will respond to you. Please note that the pastor's number has changed to 0908-320-4019. Kindly note that neither our pastor nor any of the workers nor members of any of the chat groups set up in church will use such a medium to request for any kind of monetary contributions. Therefore, don't fall prey to such requests. We advise that you set up the two-step verification processes available on WhatsApp to secure your WhatsApp number from being hacked. Once again, thank you for joining us for service. Join us midweek, Tuesday and Thursday on Facebook and YouTube between 5 to 6 p.m. Until then, bye and God bless. Let us pray. Daddy, we thank you for your word today. We bless you and we worship you. Thank you for how you have helped us. Thank you for all the doors you have opened. Thank you for all the prison doors you have shattered today. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you because from today, O oh Lord, we enter into a new realm. We enter into your pasture. We feed on it and we are blessed for it in the mighty name of Jesus. We will go in, we will come out as your word says and we will find pasture in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, the ancient of days, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <music>